Just a few minutes ago, my office filed a lawsuit against the National Rifle Association to dissolve the organization in its entirety for years of self-dealing and illegal conduct that violate New York's charities law and undermine its own mission. The National Rifle Association, or the NRA, is the largest and most influential pro-gun organization in the nation. Since its founding in 1871, the NRA has been a registered not-for-profit charitable corporation in the state of New York. The Attorney General's office has a wide range of regulatory and enforcement powers over charitable corporations and their trustees, including the NRA. The NRA's influence has been so powerful that the organization went unchecked for decades, while top executives funneled millions into their own pockets. For years, the NRA diverted millions and millions of dollars away from its charitable mission for personal use by senior leadership to award contracts to the financial gain of close associates and family and appeared to dole out lucrative no-show contracts to former employees in order to buy their silence and continued loyalty. This lawsuit specifically charges the NRA as a whole in addition to four individual defendants. One, the first individual, longtime executive vice president Wayne LaPierre, who has been the face of the NRA for decades. Two, former treasurer and chief financial officer, Wilson Woody Phillips. Three, former chief of staff and the executive director of operations, Joshua Powell. And four, corporate secretary and general counsel, John Frazier. These individuals in the NRA are charged with failing to manage the NRA's funds and failing to follow numerous state and federal laws, which contributed to the loss of more than 64 million dollars in just three years. Since its founding in 1871, the NRA has been a registered not-for-profit charitable corporation in the state of New York. And these organizations are required by law to register and file annual financial reports with the office of the New York State Attorney General and the assets of such an organization are legally required to be used in a way that serves the interest of NRA membership and that advance the organization's charitable mission. However, as, today complaints, as today's complaints lays out, we found that the NRA instead fostered a culture of noncompliance and disregard for internal controls that led to the waste and loss of millions in assets and contributed to the NRA's current deteriorated financial state. Not only were the NRA's internal policies repeatedly not followed, but they were blatantly ignored by senior leaders. The NRA's board's uh, audit committee was negligent in its duty to ensure appropriate, competent, and judicious stewardship of assets by NRA leadership. Specifically, the audit committee failed to ensure standard fiscal controls. They failed to respond adequately to whistleblowers, affirmatively took steps to conceal the nature and scope of whistleblower concerns from external auditors and they failed to review potential conflicts of interest for employees. In our lawsuit, we outlined dozens of examples of these failures, many of which were led and perpetuated by the four individual defendants named in this lawsuit, 
who failed to fulfill their fiduciary duty to the NRA. They use millions upon millions of dollars from the NRA for personal use, including for lavish trips for themselves and their families, private jets, expensive meals, and other private travel. Wayne LaPierre, Woody Phillips, Joshua Powell, and John Frazier instituted a culture of self-dealing, mismanagement, and negligent oversight at the NRA that was illegal, oppressive, and fraudulent. They overrode and they invaded, evaded internal controls to allow themselves, their families, and favored board members, employees, and vendors to benefit through reimbursed expenses, related party transactions, excess compensation, side deals, and waste of charitable assets without regard to the NRA's best interest. The central figure behind this scheme was none other than Mr. Wayne LaPierre, the national face of the NRA who was entrusted with running its day-to-day -day operations. Mr. LaPierre exploited the organization for his and his family's financial benefit and the benefit of a close, close circle of NRA staff, board members, and vendors. Specifically, Mr. LaPierre spent hundreds of thousands of dollars of the NRA's charitable assets for personal private plane trips for himself and his family, including extended family when he was not present. He visited the Bahamas by private air charter at least eight times in an approximate three-year period with his family at a, at a, at a cost of more than $500,000 to the NRA. He traveled on multiple luxury hunting safaris in Africa at the expense of an NRA vendor. He spent millions of dollars on unwanted travel consultants for decades, including for the booking of luxury black car service. In the past two years alone, Mr. LaPierre spent more than $3.6 million on these travel agent services. He secured a post-employment contract for himself with the NRA without board approval, currently valued at more than $17 million. He allotted several million dollars annually in NRA funds for private security costs for himself and his family without sufficient oversight on their use. He received more than $1.2 million in reimbursement in just a four-year period for expenditures that included gifts for favored friends and vendors, travel expenses for himself and his family, and membership fees at golf clubs, hotels, and other member clubs. He even secured lucrative consulting contracts for ex employees and board members worth millions of dollars. Yet often it resulted in little, if any, actual work. In addition to grossly misusing these funds for personal use, Mr. LaPierre created a, an illegal pass-through arrangement to conceal the very nature of these expenditures. For decades, Mr. LaPierre and the founder of Ackerman McQueen the NRA's longtime advertising firm, had a practice whereby Ackerman McQueen would pay for these non-contractual, out-of-pocket expenses for, La, for Mr. LaPierre and other NRA executives and pass those expenses through to the NRA. These expenses would then be paid for by the NRA without written approval, without receipts, without any supporting business purpose documentation. Ackerman McQueen would aggregate the expenses into a lump sum amount and then bill them to the NRA 
without any details on the nature or purpose of the expense, completely in violation of state law. These expenses did not comply with IRS requirements, and as a result, all such expenses should have been included by the NRA in taxable personal income for Mr. LaPierre and other recipients. In 2017 and 2018 alone, just two years, Ackerman, Ackerman McQueen was paid more than $70 million. A significant amount of these funds included payments through this side agreement. And when board members challenged Mr. LaPierre and the three other defendants over this lavish spending, their financial governance or their leadership of the NRA, Mr. LaPierre retaliated and turned the board against those who attempted to challenge his illegal behavior. The complaint lays out numerous other instances in which Mr. LaPierre, Phillips, Mr. Phillips, Mr. Powell, and Mr. Frazier, and other executives and board members at the NRA abused their power and illegally diverted or facilitated the diversion of tens of millions of dollars from the NRA. These funds were in addition to millions of dollars the four individual defendants were already receiving in grossly excessive salaries and bonuses that were baseless and did not adhere to prudent standards for evaluating and determining compensation as is required by law. Altogether, there are 18 causes of action and these actions violated multiple laws, including the laws governing the NRA's charitable status, false reporting on annual filings with my office and the IRS, improper expense documentation, improper wage reporting, improper income tax withholding, failure to make required excise tax reporting and payments, payments in excess of reasonable compensation to disqualified persons, and waste of NRA assets, amongst other offenses. For these years of fraud and misconduct, we are seeking an order to dissolve the NRA in its entirety, to require Mr. LaPierre, Mr. Phillips, Mr. Powell, and Mr. Frazier to make full restitution for funds they unlawfully profited and salaries they earned while employees, uh, while they earned while employees and pay penalties. To remove Mr. LaPierre and Mr. Frazier from the NRA's leadership and to ensure none of the four, four individual defendants can ever again serve on the board of a charity in New York State. It's important to note that Mr. Phillips and Mr. Powell have left the NRA. It's clear that the NRA has been failing to carry out its stated mission for many, many years, and instead has operated as a breeding ground for greed, abuse, and brazen illegality. In this state, we have a set of laws that every individual and entity must be held accountable to regardless of who you are, regardless of your power, size, influence, wealth, or station in life. One set of laws. And today, we send a strong and loud message that no one is above the law, not even the NRA, one of the most powerful organizations in this country. Again, I'd like to thank the chief of the Charities Bureau, Jim Sheehan, and the co-chief of the enforcement section, Emily Stern. And they led with a dedicated and experienced and professional team of attorneys who I'm very proud to be associated with. Also a team of accountants and legal assistants, and they include Assistant Attorney General and Special Counsel of the Litigation Bureau, Monica Connell, 
Assistant Attorney General William Wong, Wang. Assistant Attorney General Sharon Sash. Assistant Attorney General Jonathan Conley. Assistant Attorney General Stephen Thompson. And Assistant Attorney General Erica James. All of the Charities Bureau. With additional assistance from Chief Accountant Judith Welsh Ebros. Assistant Associate Accountant Darren Bouchamp and Associate Accountant Charles Aganu, in addition to numerous other individuals at the Office of Attorney General. The Charities Bureau is part of the Division for Social Justice, which is supervised by Chief Deputy Attorney General Megan Fox and First Deputy Attorney General Jennifer Levy, who were integral and instrumental in overseeing this entire process. And now, my friends, I'm happy to take questions. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, Shimon Pro, Professor of CNN. So yeah. I can see this already uh, developing from the president and certainly the Republicans who are going to say that you're only going after the NRA because of their support of him and because of their support of the Republicans. How would you respond to, to that? By no means. This was an investigation that started in 2019 until this day. It's based on the facts. We follow the facts and the law, and we come to conclusions of law. And as a result of that, we've come to the conclusion that the NRA, unfortunately, was serving as a personal piggy bank to four individual defendants. And if I could just follow up, why call, you know, this is, as you said, a very powerful organization that's been around for so yeah. many years. This could not have been an easy decision uh, in some ways to, to come to. Why call for the dissolve, for it to dissolve instead of just the removal of, of these people and try to keep this organization intact? Why is it that this organization now needs to basically go away? Because the corruption was so broad and because of the level of waste and because they have basically um, destroyed all of the assets of uh, the corporation, it was critically important uh, um, that uh, one of the causes of actions and one of the remedies that we are seeking is the dissolution of the NRA. Larry Dumont, uh, the Associated Press. Okay. Uh, courts always look for prior precedents uh, to do something like this. Uh, what's the prior precedents that you would cite for dissolving an organization over fraud? So there, there are two prior cases in the last couple of years. One is called the uh, multicultural, I'm, I'm, I'm not, multicultural um, Federation of Multicultural Programs out of Brooklyn. And the second is the Trump Foundation. Um, the Office of Attorney General, particularly um, in regards to the not-for-profit law, is um, tasked with um, having jurisdiction over not-for-profits um, in the civil realm and not the criminal realm. Um, and that's why this is a, a civil enforcement action. If the NRA was to, oh, Megan Palin from the U.S. Sun, if you? the NRA was to be dissolved, what sort of effect or what would that mean for the wider issue? gun violence in this country. I know you've been uh, supportive and outspoken of uh, gun control before. So this um, has nothing to do with my personal opinion with regards to gun violence. This has to do with the fact that four individual defendants and the NRA as a corporation, unfortunately, did not follow not-for-profit law in the state of New York. And as a result of that, they should be held accountable. And that's why we seek their dissolution. We seek the banning of these four individual defendants. We seek restitution. Um, it's primarily because these individuals, unfortunately, did not follow the mission of the NRA. Is going after the individual the strategy to bring the organization down? Is this the moment that you've been waiting for? It's, it's not a question of a moment that I've been waiting for. This is a question, again, of following the facts and applying the law. And when you apply the law and you come to a conclusion, the only conclusion that you can come to is that these four individual defendants, as well as the NRA, um, and all of its uh, directors and officers violated the law. And they did it over a period of a year. And it went on unchecked for a period of a year. And uh, we came to the conclusion, based upon our thorough investigation, that enough was enough. And we needed to step in and dissolve this corporation, just as we did with the Trump Foundation. Just we'll take one more question in the room, and then we're going to go to the first one. 
Do you have any concerns for your own safety, considering the NRA is such a powerful organisation and does have so much support? Now, now that you're making this, do you have any concerns? None whatsoever. Okay, we're going to go to virtual calls. My colleague Kelly will introduce the callers on the phone. Good afternoon. For the reporters who have joined us virtually for today's press conference, please use the raise hand function at the bottom of your screen to ask a question. Our first question today will come from Danny Hakeem from the New York Times. Yeah, hi. Hello, hello uh, Attorney General. Hi, Danny. Um, do you anticipate uh, seeking or making a criminal referral in this matter and would you rule out doing so in the future if you're not planning to do so now this is an ongoing invet well, first of all thank you for the question it's an ongoing investigation and if we un uncover any uh, criminal activity we will refer it um, to the manhattan district attorney but at this point in time we're moving forward again in civil enforcement our next question will come from tara lenning of the washington post Attorney General James, this is Carol Lennig. Thanks for your news conference. I have a question about your findings regarding um, LaPierre's ability to avoid reporting expenses as personal income on his personal income taxes. Have you or will you refer that to the IRS? And do you believe he evaded personal income taxes in a pattern over several years? So I will not, uh, again, come to a conclusion on whether or not he violated the um, Internal Revenue Code. Uh, we are in the midst of um, submitting our complaint to the IRS, and we will contact the IRS accordingly. Thank you. Our next question will come from Stephen Gandel from CBS. Hi, thanks very much for taking my question. So many people today were speculating that uh, the conference was going to be related to President Donald Trump. Can you give us an update on any investigations you have of President Trump or the Trump Organization? The Manhattan DA has uh, reportedly received documents from Deutsche Bank. You have also subpoenaed Deutsche Bank. Have you have they complied with your subpoena? And if so, can you give us a sense of what they've uh, given you? Thank you for that question, which is not the subject of today's press conference and will not comment on any other investigation. Thank you. Our next question will come from John Campbell from Gannett News. Hi, Attorney General. Uh, the, the Trump Foundation lawsuit, which uh, you know predated you here, it, it resulted in a settlement. Are you open to any sort of settlement talks with the, the NRA that, that would result in anything less than the institution of the organization? Thank you for the question, and, and it is not um, my habit to negotiate um, any resolution in public. Uh, we filed our complaint today. Um, there are 18 causes of action. They include but are not limited to the dissolution of the NRA in its entirety. Our next question will come from Mark Merrimont from the Wall Street Journal. Sorry, I was muted. Uh, Attorney General, thank you so much for the time. Sure. I was wondering uh, if the, um, uh, since you're seeking to dissolve this organization, is it possible that, uh, that this could lead to uh, some kind of a tit for tat? In other words, conservative Attorney Generals and other states might take some kind of an action like this? Uh, or is it possible that the NRA could say, okay, if you want to dissolve us, then we'll just move to Oklahoma, and you know, uh, now we're done with New York. You no longer would have power over the over this organization. I'm not going to speculate um, as to the future plans of the NRA. Um, the NRA again was formed under the not-for-profit laws in the state of New York, and as a result, the Office of Attorney General has supervisory jurisdiction over all not-for-profits, including but not limited to the NRA. Our next question will come from Eric Larson of Bloomberg. Um, yes. 
Right. Um, the allegations that you've laid out here um, suggest that the NRA donors and members here were really essentially victimized allegedly uh, by these actions. And is it not further victimizing them by uh, forcing their, uh, you know, their organization to close uh, an organization that's pretty popular across the whole country? Um, is that is that necessarily fair to these victims here? The, it's, the issue is the following. A number of donors have contributed to the NRA because they believe in their mission. At this, at this point in time, the NRA right now is um, financially is in, it's in a deficit. Um, and as a result of four individual defendants who have basically looted its assets. And so one would think um, that the donors uh, would like for an organization to have some governance, some standards, um, some uh, standards of behavior, um, and that they would recognize their fiduciary duty uh, to a not-for-profit and or its mission, as opposed to looting, um, a, uh, looting assets and using it for their own personal benefit and or and their family. Our next question will be Jesus Garcia from El Diario. Hi, thank you. Thank you, General Attorney. Do you find that part of that money was used in political campaigns? If yes, which one? Um, so that is uh, not a subject of this uh, press conference today, um, but I do want you to know that our investigation is on. Thank you. Our next question will be Jose Luis well, Attorney General, thank you for taking my question. Um, I was just wondering if you could focus for the next couple of immediate steps with the understanding that this type of legal action can take years. What will we see in the coming weeks and months? So I'm confident that there will be a response that will be filed uh, by the NRA. We will go through a series of motions. There will be discovery, um, and course of action in all of our cases. Uh, and so we will continue to keep you abreast of the status of this. Our next question will be from Victoria Atkins, New York City Courts Media. Hi, Attorney General James. Uh, thanks for taking the question. Um, many have criticized uh, the settlement your office brokered with the Weinstein Company, maintaining that the sum would have been greater if Weinstein personally had to pay into it. At any point during the settlement process, did you consider or advocate for Harvey Weinstein paying into the settlement? And if not, why not? So that's not the subject of the press conference here today. Uh, we will be providing, giving you an update in regards to the Weinstein negotiations. And I thank you for the question. We have time for two more questions. Our next question will be from Paul Rienzo from WBAI. Okay, just a minute. Uh, thank you very much for your uh, taking this call, Attorney General. My question is, uh, Will you attempt to freeze the assets of the targets of this investigation or of the NRA or in any way try and put them from this, uh, during this investigation? That is one of the remedies that we are seeking um, under, under um, our proceedings. And so we look forward to, again, doing um, investigation to determine whether, where, if there are any hidden assets and whether or not they can be frozen again, for the purpose of benefiting those donors who have given to the NRA over the, over the years um, for um, the, its intended mission. Our question today will be from Sonia Moe from CNN. Hi, Attorney General. Thanks so much for taking my question. Um, it's actually a two-parter. One, um, it's a lot of allegations of uh, potential tax fraud here. Has this been reported to the IRS? And two, um, why take the entire organization instead of members can you speak to why that was necessary in this case. We thank you for those questions that were previously uh, asked and answered. We will answer them again. Uh, we will be forwarding the complaint to the IRS and we'll be in touch with the IRS in regards to any violations of the internal revenue. Um, and uh, two, uh, because of the numerous complaints and, and, um, and based upon the facts and the application of law, uh, we concluded um, that the best way to um, address this matter is to seek resolution uh, before a uh, New York State Supreme Court judge. And that is what we are seeking 
again, given the breadth and the depth of the corruption, illegality, um, and the brazen attempts uh, to basically uh, evade the law. I thank you all for coming.